Hey everybody, uh, in this video I'm going to talk about the first step in our design setup process which is called rough cut capacity analysis. So before I jump into the rough cut model, let me just show, let me slow this down a little bit, our simulation model and, and this is really shows the process flow that our system is based on. So we have patients arrive, they go through a check-in process, they then wait in a queue for a, for one of the inoculation station locations to be available. They then go to that inoculation station location. After that, they go to the observation area where they stay for 15, approximately 15 minutes if they're a, a regular patient or 30 minutes if they're a high-risk patient. There's also a high-risk consultation here that's not shown in this, uh, in this model. So if you're a high-risk patient, you go through an extra consultation uh, action. And there's a pharmacy area, and the pharmacy uh, um, uh, prepares doses in batches and then takes those batches to the inoculation station. So when they run low on uh, dosages, then the, the pharmacy then sends out, um, uh, sends out batches of, of doses. So that's the basic process flow uh, that we're doing. And so the first step, as I said, is something called rough cut capacity, anal capacity analysis. So we're going to start out with this really simple Excel model which is a basic queuing model. And the idea of rough cut capacity analysis is to look at the raw capacity that you have and to verify that with the raw capacity you can meet the demand. If you can't meet the demand with the raw capacity, then you can't hope to meet the demand in a real system. So you can think about that rough cut capacity as the ceiling, as the capacity ceiling. And so we also use the rough cut capacity to get started with the actual simulation analysis, because in the simulation analysis, we consider things like variation and interaction between entities and process sequence and things that uh, reduce the actual capacity from the theoretical capacity. So it's a good idea to know what that theoretical capacity is. So here, our model, again, re really simple. Uh, in the Excel version, the things in yellow you should adjust, and the ones that aren't in yellow you shouldn't adjust. And what you should look at are what are shown here is the green ones. So you can think about, for this model, we have a target daily vaccinations, which I have as 1,000 here, and the target number of hours per day. And so this is saying if you want to do 1,000 vaccinations in eight hours, you need, to, you need to do 125 per hour. And then based on this number, we then look at the individual areas within the clinic. So we look at the observation area in the parking deck or parking area for cars. So if you say that the nominal observation time is 15 minutes, the high risk observation time is 30 minutes, and you say 5% of your population is high risk, then the weighted average waiting time is 15.8 minutes. And so on average, you're going to need 32.8 or 33 spaces. So 33 spaces for people to wait. And these, of course, have to be that within a six-foot distance. Now, remember, this is the nominal amount, the average amount. So when you incorporate variation, you're probably going to want to plan for a little bit more. But this is a good first estimate. So you can also put in the number of spaces that you have. In this case, we have 92 spaces. So the extra spaces that we have for this scenario are 52. Similarly, for parking, uh, you have to estimate the total time in the clinic, and so obviously this is an artifact of your system, uh, but you can estimate it. And so if we say that a person spends on average 30 minutes uh, from parking to departing, and we assume that 85% of your population drives their car individually, then you need 58 or 57.8 or 58 parking spaces to be able to accommodate the, the flow. Uh, if we have 100 spaces, which is what we have, then you have 42.2 excess based on your current capacity. Next we have injection stations. So for ours we have 10 injection stations where we have one person per injection station. So a person, patient goes and you have one person giving the injection. Then you need the average time. So we say the average time is 4.5 minutes. And so your raw injection capacity is 133.3 uh, injections per hour. So again, based on our demand of 125 per hour, we have this excess capacity of um, 8.3. For the pharmacy, uh, as I said, our pharmacy delivers doses to the individual injection stations in batches, and our batch size is 12 doses, and we have two pharmacy modules, and so you need to input how long, what's the nominal time for the pharmacy to create a batch. So in 6.5 minutes, one pharmacy module can produce one batch of 12, one batch of 12 doses. So since we have two of those, our pharmacy capacity is 221.5 doses per hour. 
And again, we're comparing that against the 125 patients per hour uh, to show our excess capacity. For check-in, yeah, how long does it take? What's the average check-in time? And so if you do any kind of computer work here, or if you're verifying someone's ID or something, you need an estimate of that time. In ours, it's 1.75 minutes, and we have four check-in clerks. And so that gives us a raw capacity of 137.43, uh, and again, an excess capacity of 12.1 patients per hour. And lastly, we have the high-risk consultation area, where high-risk patients, so again, we have this this percentage of the population, 5%, have to go through this additional uh, Q&A for high-risk consultation. And so if we assume that we have one consultant and it takes five minutes, then you have a, a nominal rate of 12 patients per hour. And then if you take that 5% of our arriving population, then you can figure out what your expectation is. And so this is telling us that we have uh, excess consultation capacity of, uh, of 5.8. In other words, we can meet that consultation capacity for the rate of 125 per hour, given that 5% of those are high risk. So basically, if you want to manipulate the model, you can modify the target throughput. So for example, let's say that I wanted to do 1,500. So I just change that number to 1,500, and immediately what we see down here is our injection station excess capacity is now red, and we have a negative capacity. So basically what that's telling me is I can't handle with 10 injection stations at this time 1,500 uh, patients per day, again, which is 187.5 patients per hour. So I either need to increase my number of injection stations or increase my number of injectors per station, somehow decrease the in in injection time. I have to do something to get this number or I can't support this uh, 1,500. But, uh, and also check-in, check-in capacity here, we're way under capacity uh, for that. And so using this model, if I wanted to achieve the 1,500, what I could do is just adjust these numbers. So let's say that I have six. Six is, uh, it turns green, so I have that, that uh, sufficient capacity to go look at five. I don't have enough at five, so six is going to be the, the raw capacity number here. And let's just stick with one injector per station and say, suppose I had 12. No, 12 stations not going to do it. Uh, 14, 14 is not going to do it. Uh, 15, so now if you have 15 stations. And so you can manipulate your model. Uh, to get, again, this rough cut capacity saying that if you want to achieve 1,500 in eight hours, these are the basic settings, or this is the, the minimum settings that you need. Now, once again, this rough cut capacity doesn't include things like process variation, uh, variation in the arrival pattern. All of this stuff is going to be dealt with in the simulation model, but this gives you a basic starting point and also tells you, you know, that there, if you're in a situation where you have no hope. So again, if I want to do 1,500 patients per day and I only have 10 inoculation stations, I just can't do it. There's no configuration of the system that's going to, uh, that's going to let me do that. Uh, and so you will know that right off front. Similarly, on the space constraint here, so if I do 1,500, then my observation uh, space used on average is about 50. And so you're probably going to want to reserve 60 spaces uh, to account for that variation. And so if you don't have 60 spaces where you can have the social distancing, then you're not going to be able to do it. And so the whole idea of using the rough cut capacity model is so that you can get a basic idea of the resource requirements, or if your resource requirements are fixed, like I know how many pharmacists and injectors and so on that I have, I can get a rough estimate of what my target daily vaccinations uh, can be.